Hey, how's it going? Wanted to run over a few little tips which might help you out when you're tying with uh, bucktails, specifically tying hollow flies. It's a technique that can also be sort of transferred onto other materials, but specifically with bucktail and specifically with hollow tying. Helps a lot. Um, I learned this little trick from a fellow South African, Oman Flies, who's an exceptional fly fisherman, an exceptional fly tire. Always got lots of tricks, um, very much a thinking fly tire. So not surprisingly, when I spoke to him about 18 months ago, he mentioned a little technique which he then sent through to me, which has made a huge difference and speeded up tying. And certainly when you're using the thread dam technique and specifically um, for hollow tying, Bob Poffage's thread dam technique, which he uses on the both the beast flies and his hollow flies. Um, so that one really helps. Um, it speeds it up, makes it sort of a little bit more controllable. So it's a nice little trick to use in the beginning. I'd certainly speed it up a lot of my time when I was tying a lot of big beasts um, using the thread dam technique. Um, and then I'm also going to run over just the two different ways of hollow tying. Uh, what I one which I call bullet tying, um, and the other one which is Bob Popovich's thread dam tying. The both techniques might be you know pretty simple, rudimentary, or not new to you. They were new to me when I learned them, so I figured I might as well try and. Uh, point out a few things of the way I do it or where I use which one in particular um, these days and maybe that'll help you out. So we'll start off with uh, the thread dam um, sort of trick or hack that Oman sent through to me. I call it the money bump method. Um, it involves using a set of thread bumps to help you control the flare as well as the fill in of the thread, da thread dam in the front of your hollow tire. So, um, yeah, we'll run through both of those. Hope you enjoy. Okay, we're starting off um, tying with uh, really bright orange thread, so hopefully you can get a better look at this. Um, so just for demonstration purposes, I pretty much whacked that in the middle of the, of the shank of the hook. So this money bump method, method which certainly helps with controlling the flare and controlling that thread dam in the front of your fly, or in the front of your thread, should I say, in the front of your fibers. So basically what you want to do, I'm going to go ahead and start it in front of this. You want to build up a pair, so I call it the money bumps. You want to build up a pair of thread bumps. Try and get them, it's not massively important to get them perfect but hopefully you can see that there yeah built up two little bumps like that just going to be tying with white bucktail I'm going with I'm going to tie with a fairly large chunk here because it's going to hopefully just help show the technique a little bit better so typical with bucktail, make sure you clean all your bits out. So a lot of the problem that I certainly had in the beginning when I was doing this is when you tie in, you tie your bucktail in and then you reverse it. And now you've got to build this big old thread dam in the front, trying to keep it perfectly straight to try and get this perfect cone of bucktail fibers where you want them. So what this does is you're basically going to build your two thread dams and you're going to bring your thread back to right in between the two of them. Going for your reverse tie, just your hollow tie. I'm not going to go over all of this. Um, best person to watch would be Gunnar Bremer um, when it comes to best ways to <clears throat> you know, make sure you get your bucktail tying in perfect. So we're just going to spread that all the way around 360, try and keep everything as straight as possible. So you've got everything kind of where you want it. Remember to cord your thread. I'm going to go tie back towards that little bump. You can see those are flaring. You can clear those off if you want. You know, if you're right back in the tail end of the flower, where you're wanting a lot of slope down, um, a lot of slope back, should I say. That helps you can see a bit more. All those out the front. So now what you want to make sure you do is you want forward to keeping yourself inside of that thread bump. Your last wrap, you want to make it nice and straight, nice and tight. 
So you've got a straight line in the front of this when you push back. You're going to go ahead and get your push tool. Just going to adjust this slightly. Push tool, I like to be able to do is just take a couple of whacks on that. Gently, it helps spread the fibers out nice and evenly. You can check that they're where you want them to be. Push all the fibers back. Get them around, try and keep everything. Make sure you're going 360. There's always that one that wants to hide in the bend of the hook. What I like to do is then just stroke this back. And if you can see, let's see if we can get closer. What I have here is this, you're going to pull now right straight through. You're going to come up in that little gap between the thread bump and the end of your fiber. So what this is doing now is I've immediately already got my thread dam half built and I now just need to fill that gap in. It prevents your thread from sliding and slipping down. So what I've done now is I've already been able to create that thread dam. So <clears throat> I can then go now, it's already got a nice straight <coughs> excuse me, line, which is important. And I can now go back and I can make that as narrow or as wide as I want. If I want to make it cone it down, if I'm further towards the back of the fly, I want to scale the fly with a skinnier profile, I'm going up. And if I'm further towards the front of the flower, wanting to bulk up, wanting to give it some bulk. There you go. And then I can just wind forward. And I'm not going to whip that because I'm going to redo it and strip it off. So basically, what that thread dam does is it gives you a place where your thread is basically tracked into a V. And when you tie your bucktail in, when you pull it tight, it's now trapped in that V. You fold everything back, you've now got another V between the tip, the front end of your bucktail, what's been folded back, and that next money bump. And that's where you can fill that in, it's that way your thread's not going to suddenly start wanting to slide forward and you don't have to spend all this time winding, winding, winding to build up this perfect cone. It's already pre-built and there it is. So, thanks to Almond Flies, it makes things a lot quicker, a lot speedier, and a lot more even. You can see you've got a nice, even finish all the way around with that. And away you go. Hope that helps. Right, I hope this is recording. <clears throat> cool, so I'm going to go over the second method that I use quite a lot. I uh, learned this from Paul o. Monaghan watching one of his videos uh, when he was reverse tying or hollow tying. What I like about it is that it's quick. Uh, it lose, uses a lot less thread and it's quite a lot easier to control when you're looking for not your super wide flares. Um, it's very difficult to get a really wide flare with this, but it can be done with really sort of hollow bucktail. But I like it for the back end of the flower. So if I'm tying regular hollow, sort of your first, your second up to maybe your third tying point on beasts um, or anything with a shank uh, where I'm tying on an extension, I typically will use this on the whole extension. The reason being, like I said, it's quicker, uses less thread, it's also very solid. So. We're basically back where we would have started our normal hollow tying point here. Um, we've got the thread right up at the front here. So creating that nice straight line. So what we would have done now is take the push tool, push through, uh, push all the fibers back and then bring the thread through and build a thread dam in front. We're going to do something a little different now. So this is probably a more traditional way of hollow tying. We're going to take our thread and wind it back. So it's important to get a nice straight clean edge right at the back so basically we've gone up against that last money bump there pull that nice and tight same thing your push tool get all your fibers back and out of the way including the one that always gets stuck in the bend of the hook so now, instead of us pulling our thread right through like this, we're going to, because of where we left our thread, we're going to go back and go over that once, twice, just loose wraps. Basically, you can see now you've got a pretty flat profile on the bucktail, but it gives you the chance now before you pull everything tight, just to go through, make sure everything's where it should be. Again, make sure you've now got a nicely corded up thread, nice and tight. 
And all you're going to do is just give that a pull slowly. You see, you create that same flare just using the thread tension and the hollowness of the bucktail. So I usually like to take two wraps, two tight wraps, and then just wind forward twice just to sort of lock it in place. So it's a little less controllable in some respects, but in others you can now also go back. You want to maybe sort of close off that flare a little bit. You can put some loose wraps around there. Or you can back it off. Back it off. You might be able to try and top, go in there and get an even tighter one if you wanted. Make sure you're pulling on all 360 degrees so you get that. Then you can wind forward and basically lock that off. So you can control that at any stage that you want. What I like now I usually do is I go and put a little bit of super glue over that point right there. And that is locked in. That's not going anywhere. You tie it in twice. That's solid. So what it is, it's nice and quick, it's nice and controllable. You can put a little bit of super glue in there, which will certainly help you. And then, boom, you move on to your next one. So it's also quite a nice method if you've got a really short, hollow bucktail that you're actually just wanting to use for bulk. You can bring it in there, whip it in, tie it in, bang it really quickly, and it'll flare up for you. And you can put some other materials over the top of that if you're trying to just create a superstructure or, or some kind of bulk uh, without adding weight with other materials that don't have their own inherent built-in bulk but have good colors or flash or anything like that this is a much quicker way to do it than doing it by you know carefully building those thread dams obviously looking at it it doesn't give you quite that clean back edge um, or the clean front edge so finishing a fly like this I would always much prefer to go with a thread dam method you know a reverse bulkhead or just a classic reverse hollow tie with the thread dam in the front but yeah hope that helps